Hello. Hello. So getting older sucks, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's bad enough when I lay down to go to sleep at night, my boobs like flop down into my boot or my armpits. <laughs> but now I'm getting too old to go to music festivals. I miss music festivals. You dance your ass off for six hours straight, go back to your tent or your hotel room and wake up the next day, do it all over again, two more times. It's the best diet in the world. Now I gotta go to the gym and work out. You know what it's like to run on a treadmill for an hour? It's like being a lab rat without the drugs. <laughs> Which I think is the perfect metaphor for my life right now. A lab rat without the drugs. <laughs> you try being a single mom, listening to your daughter FaceTime her dad's new girlfriend's little sister <laughs> about their upcoming trip to Miami while you're dicking around with a 17 foot ladder trying to change light bulbs. Oh, just makes you want to hang yourself while you're up there. But you can't, because you wouldn't want to ruin your daughter's perfect attendance or anything. Yeah, my ex left me with a kid in vaulted ceilings. He was an aerospace engineer, actually. He can build a titanium rocket ship. Wouldn't know what a clitoris was if you popped one out and showed it to him. So that's why I decided to uh, miss my daughter's gymnastics banquet to go to a three-day music festival? Ooh. Ooh, yeah, don't judge me, okay? I mean, I love my daughter like I love my next breath, but sometimes I look at her and think, I can't believe I fucked this guy. I mean, she's stupider than he is. Okay, she, that little brat just ate all of the garlic out of my garlic-stuffed olives and left the olives. Then had the audacity to blame it on the cats. What kind of idiot am I raising? That is the type of lie that's gonna land you in prison one day. Like, oh, it's the cat's weed officer. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, if you're the type of friend that likes to sit in a car and chill out and listen to music while your friends go into the grocery store to get food for a three-day music festival, then maybe parenting's not for you. <laughs> I know, because I'm that friend that decides to eat an edible before going grocery shopping for a three-day music festival? Okay, you have to watch those edibles and they will mess you up. I, I, I was higher than a giraffe's pussy, okay? <laughs> Sitting in the back of my friend's car trying to figure out how to use my iPhone to text my friends what food to get me? Okay, listen, those smart devices are not so smart when you're high. I ended up texting my boss about this cool guy that I met in the parking lot that had a tank of nitrous in his van. <laughs> oh yeah, and well, in my defense, my boss had texted me that day about going to a uh, one of those camp retreats where you go and you work on team building exercises. I can't think of a better team building exercise than sneaking a tank of nitrous into a festival. <laughs> Listen, that is determination. That is something that you want on your resume under skills and attributes. I snuck a tank of nitrous into a festival, okay? I am hardworking. And being a, fe being a girl, being a female, it is really hard to find like another girl that you really want to go to a three-day music festival with. I mean, music festivals are drama-free, okay? But you need to know that the girl can handle her drugs and alcohol. Yes. Nobody wants to go with the girl that's gonna ditch you as soon as you walk through the gate and you find two days later passed out in the back of a tour bus. Yes. That girl is not your friend. That girl will get you drug into court as a witness on Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> or worse, roofied. Either way, you're missing dead mouse in the snake pit at the Indianapolis 500. <laughs> Big 500 fans? Yeah. Woo! It's like Burning Man for Trump voters. <laughs> but no, regard, it doesn't matter what festival you go to. When you go with a girl, it's gotta be drama free. I mean, no one wants to go with one of those dumb twats that you see crying at the front of the gate because they just wasted $500 on a ticket to a concert they're not going to because they forgot about the drugs in their purse. <laughs> Everybody knows they checks your bags at the gate. That's what the vagina's for, right? right? I mean, that's, you, you put the drugs in the vagina. Just saying, look, if El Chapo had a pussy, he wouldn't be sitting in prison right now. 
<laughs> that is the one perk of being a female. Right? They never check the pussy at the gate. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to equality, dickwads. <laughs> I was uh, I was at Dunk Twat once. I <laughs> true story. I uh, it was Memorial Day weekend. I was in Las Vegas. I was going to see Dead Mouse, and. Uh, we were going to like the pool party and I knew, I knew that they checked your bags before you went in. I was well aware and somehow I spaced it and we had these like VIP bracelets on so we didn't have to wait in line. We could just like walk in. So by the time I got up there, it was like too late and I could see them like checking. So I went to try to turn around and be like, oh, I got forgot my key. I'll be right back. No, they didn't. They grabbed me. They went through my purse and they pulled out a molly and they're like, what is this? I was like, I don't know, but you're probably going to take it. And they're like, yeah. But since you're all girls, we'll let you guys go back in line and then you can come in. And I was like, I grabbed it out of his hand and I was like, how about I just take it now? <laughs> and that's how I got banned from Wet Republic in Las Vegas. <laughs> so I just got back from LA. I was out there doing mics and the uh, celebrity sightseeing tours, huge out there. You just see double decker, or double decker buses, just with people like just hanging outside taking pictures of celebrities. And I was like, yeah, I mean, who would want to pay to go well watching when you could spend your money to be like, wow, Kim Kardashian really does have a big ass. <laughs> yeah, well, some people won't laugh at that, so thank you for laughing. But it's like, she spent good money on that ass. And her lips and her tits. I mean, the bitch is completely recyclable. <laughs> I think they should take the Nobel Peace Prize away from Al Gore and give it to Kim Kardashian. Yeah. No, I, I love the Kardashians, I do. Even that ugly one that had all those surgeries and is really pretty now. What's that skank's name? <laughs> Caitlyn! <laughs> no. no, but I mean, do you ever stop and think about what kind of an example this show sets for the future skanks of this country? I mean, I made a sex tape. I didn't get a reality show. I was like 12 and it was with my cousin. <laughs> which is totally legal in Indiana. Unless you're gay. Aww. Then they send you to conversion therapy to learn which cousin you're allowed to finger bang at the Indianapolis 500. Yeah. <laughs> so I have this sweater. I don't have it on now, but anytime I wear it, it's, it I get compliments on it. It's my favorite sweater. It's like a cardigan. And um, I always tell people, I'm like, oh, thanks. I stole it from my ex. And it's like, well, I didn't really steal it. He left it at my house because his girlfriend got it for him to go to one of those ugly Christmas party sweaters. And then after the party, he left it at my house. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, if you don't want me to steal your stuff, don't leave it at my house, right? Yeah. I mean, he leaves everything. He'll leave his pants at my house. Then my daughter gets up in the morning. She's like, oh, is dad here? And I was like, huh. he's like, yeah, honey. He's like the Easter bunny. He only, comes, he only comes over when you're asleep. And if you find any money in those jeans, you know you have to split it with me. Yeah, I'm not doing very well. I'm working at a call center right now. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's brutal. On, on my way to work, like, I just fantasize about getting in, like, a fatal car wreck so I don't have to go in. And then it takes everything I have just not to, like, throw myself out of the window once I get there. They bolted the windows shut, they really did. <laughs> which uh, which, which, which may, makes me think of the people that were in China that were like killing themselves when they are making our iPhones and stuff. Uh, right. yeah. This is what I wanna know. I wanna know how many people killed themselves before they put all those suicide nets up around the building, right? I mean, realistically, I mean, you can sweep a handful of employee suicide under the rug, right? Especially Asians, they're so tiny. <laughs> Once those, once those deaths reach double digits, I mean, you got a huge mess on your hands. I mean, what? Those people are getting what? Dollar seventy-five an hour? I mean, the cleanup cost alone far exceeds the values of the workers. Yeah. Right? And you can't expect a corporation just to stand by and watch your net earnings plummet to the ground. That's gonna mess with your third quarter earnings. And what about that poor schmuck that finally got the balls to go up to the top of the roof and throw himself off the building only to have to candy crush his way down to the suicide nets? <laughs> oh, that would suck. And then you're greeted by some supervisor that's like, sorry, Yao Ming, we're not done with you yet. You better get back upstairs and start working on that iPhone 10 that comes out next week. <laughs> someone's ass raping you and turning around and coming all over your face <laughs> or what apple calls a chinese suicide or chinese fire drill oh. <laughs> so, thank you.